my dance friends, and welcome to my channel. Today, I get to chat with Ebony Qualls. Ebony is a fusion dancer based out of Washington, D.C., and teaches all over the world. One of the founding instructors at Washington, D.C.'s Center for Middle Eastern Dance, and the director of fusion troupes Rockettes, Shimmy Pop, and Rock's Caravan Urban, as well as choreographer for several dance projects and troupes, as well as Zoe Jakes' House of Tarot. Ebony has toured internationally with the belly dance superstars and belly dance evolution and is also a featured instructor on Rachel Bryce's Datura Online. She teaches beginners as well as professional dancers using her very fun, approachable, and playful technique, fusing styles from traditional rock sharky to what has been referred to as tribal fusion. Ebony fuses classic Middle Eastern dance with funk and urban movement and music, usually creating fast-paced, high-energy, brain-teasing combos, and keeping all of our students happy, entertained, and excited to be dancing. Today we are going to talk about Ebony's dance background, how she found fusion dance and rock sharky, who some of her biggest dance inspirations are, how she describes her particular style of fusion dance, and also how she creates her choreographies. So without further ado, here's Ebony. Hey Blair, so good to see you again. Good to see you too. You have been just killing it, teaching online. I've seen all of your classes and I am super grateful that you had some time to chat with me today so we could hear more about what's going on with you. Thank you so much. I'm really honored that you asked me, especially because I had such a great time with you in Austin. Oh, back at you. Yeah, we got to hang out on migrations a little bit together. I couldn't remember the name of the taco place, Torchies. It was good. I haven't had Torchies in a while, but missing it right about now. The first thing that I wanted to ask you was how did you find fusion dance? Huh, okay, it was so long ago. <laughs> My dance background before getting into belly dance was in cheerleading and dance team. So I was either cheerleader or pom-pom or dance team from seventh grade all the way through university. And then once I left college, I was working for, you know, Bally's on their demo team. So I would do like step aerobics routine like if they would have grand openings and stuff. So that was like another form of cheerleading. Like I, I just needed something to do with myself. I have always just needed something physical to do. I need an activity. So that's what I was doing. But then I got disgruntled and left. I didn't like some of the corrections I was getting from the Bally's demo team. <laughs> I don't know, it's something like that. So I left. Fair enough. I was like, I need an extracurricular activity. So here in DC, there is this huge dance studio. They have like locations all over DC, Maryland, Virginia. So I went there, I was like, I'm gonna take a dance class. I don't know what dance class, but what caught my eye was belly dance and flamenco. So it was like a toss up between the two. I remember like watching the classes, like watching in the window and being like, mm, I don't know like which one. And so I don't know how I decided. I just decided to start taking belly dance. My first teacher, her name is Laurel Victoria Gray. She was a wonderful first teacher because she's a bit of a historian. Her focus is a little bit more in like Central Asian dances. Her way of teaching was a lead and follow. So it was like a very positive positive experience for me. And then she had a substitute teacher come in named Safira and she started teaching like technique. And I was all over her. I was like, who are you? Where are you going? Where are you teaching next? And she was like, I'm not <laughs> teaching right now, but you should take with Rachel Brookmeyer. So that was my first experience with like modern Egyptian style. And so at the time that I was really getting into belly dance and really falling in love with it, I was a raver. I was into house dancing and I was into drum and bass. So I was going to like rave parties on the weekends and just like everybody else who ever took belly dance and got into it, what happens? You go out dancing and you start to undulate and do chest circles and shimmies and people are like, what you doing? And then you try to cover it up like nothing. <laughs> and then you just dance like that. You don't know how you used to dance before belly dance and it all just like blends together. And from now on, you shimmy whenever you dance to anything at all. That's how I started doing fusion was I was learning like um, Rachel Brookmeyer's style is kind of like modern Egyptian with some Lebanese influence and, and very heavy American cabaret. I learned to teach belly dance from her dance studio, from Safira and from Rachel Brookmeyer. So I was combining that stuff with the stuff that I was doing in dance clubs, which was raver style, like liquid and like house, like the footwork. And then I would just add undulations and shimmies and all the accents and stuff. But in the middle of me doing all of that, I saw Rachel Bryce and I about lost my mind. I was like, I didn't know. I did not know that I could do this. 
I didn't know people were out here doing this. Nobody told me that you could be weird because I'm running around trying to look, I was trying to look like what a lot of the Egyptian style dancers look like. Even the people who are Americans, you know, they're still trying to follow like a certain aesthetic. And I was like wearing a long straight wig that didn't look right. I didn't know how to do my makeup correctly. Some of the costumes didn't fit somebody with a small waist and a big butt. I felt I looked a mess, but I was trying my best. And I just felt like I wasn't being myself. So when I saw Rachel Bryce, I was like, I think that there's room for me to be myself in this dance. No shade to anybody else that I ever took from. Like I learned so much from all of my teachers. But when I saw Rachel Bryce, I realized that there was like this alternative culture to belly dance. And then um, I saw other fusion artists as well after her urban tribal. And then all the tribe, oh, sorry, we're not saying tribal. At the time it was tribal fusion, but all the fusion dancers who were in belly dance superstars, like in 2004, I was just like, who, what? Who are they? <laughs> and I just got really into it. I was like, okay, well now I'm gonna start fusing the stuff that I do at raves with this like Egyptian style technique that I'm learning. That's basically how I started fusing. And I, I continue to learn from both traditional style belly dancers and from fusion style belly dancers. My happy place is in taking a belly dance class. You know, everybody's belly dance story is some kind of winding road. Who are some of your main inspirations for dance within fusion dance? Dance or belly dance and outside of that. Okay, I love the way that Amy Sigil teaches choreography. I didn't even see or meet Unmata. My mom saw them first. My mom went and saw them and she came back and was like, they're crazy. <laughs> they keep dancing and then they're dancing faster and then faster and then they don't stop and then they do something else. And I was like, who, what? Because I think I was out of the country and my mom went and saw them when they were here in DC. And I was like, well, let me see. And and I was like, wow, like they danced fast. It was when they were doing like fast, like a NASCAR. I so remember that, one of my favorites. I, I mean, I still do moves from that because I've watched that YouTube video so many times. And then I'll take stuff and I'll, but I'll tell my students, okay, I saw Unmata do this. It's not the same. It's inspired just to like cover my ass. You know? <laughs> this is not how they do it, but this is who I saw do it. But the way that Amy teaches choreography, like she teaches it fast, but it's still accessible. It's hard to explain, but she has like a note, she has notes tucked into her pants so that she doesn't have to stop. Like she just looked down at her pants and keep, Genius. Just keep going and going. And so I started doing that too. Like when I was, I was like, I'm gonna put some notes in my pants too. I like a class that like keeps, keep going, keep going, keep going, like don't stop. Also besides just her choreography classes, she will teach these like games, these workshops that are games. And I just remember all of us grown women just cracking up laughing like we were six years old again. Like she just brings the joy to class. Other teachers who I learned a lot from that still use their stuff over and over, Marty. Marty loves combos. In my class, I'd be like, if you don't like this, talk to Marty about it. She made this up. And this is what we doing. <laughs> so Marty, Rachel, Zoe. I was in this show earlier this year called Aphrodisiac. There are so many wonderful dancers in that show that people maybe don't recognize their names just yet. I think the show might still be somewhere on YouTube, but I really love Serena Spears. That's a friend of mine. Her energy is just so big. She could do any kind of dances that she wants. Also Rin Ajna, she's somebody who I danced with for years and she's a, a very good friend of mine, Omala Dune. A lot of people don't know about Omala Dune. She's a beautiful oriental style dancer. She was here in DC. We taught together. So she's a really amazing teacher. And then as far as like besides belly dance inspirations, those kids on Instagram and TikTok, I'm like, what they doing? I look at that stuff and I don't necessarily get up right away and try to learn those dances, but they might come out a week or two later when I'm trying to choreograph something and it just comes out and I'm like, oh, that's from the TikTok dance that I saw last week. If only they knew. I'm sure there's a lot of dance genres or experts in certain dance genres that might see me doing their stuff and be like, that's not what we meant. Well, that's what we doing. <laughs> I try to be respectful about what I'm fusing, let my students know where I learned this from. It's not authentic, you know, or who I learned it from, you know, try to give credit and try to be tasteful and respectful. I remember Marty saying that. She was saying like, just because you can, doesn't mean you should. I try to keep that in mind. So how would you describe your particular style of fusion dance? 
I would say that the fusion that I do is very heavily rooted in my oriental dance roots. So like the, like I was saying, the Egyptian, Lebanese, American cabaret. But then I tend to fuse whatever is resonating with me at the time. I might be feeling some house. I might be feeling samba. I might be feeling that I want to do something like darker in terms of fusion. You know, a lot of what we used to call tribal fusion, what now we're calling it transnational fusion or just fusion. Sometimes it was like darker and more moody. And sometimes I'm feeling that way, but sometimes I'm feeling really bubbly and like happy. So I really try to tap into how I'm feeling so that it comes from a place that's authentic for me. It needs to feel good for me. It needs to feel, okay, I don't want to say effortless, but it needs to feel like flow. I don't ever want to feel like I'm forcing it. I do it because it feels good to me. I'm not saying that to belittle or begrudge anybody else's process. Maybe for some other people, they're like working through things. I know that dance is a way for people to work through negative emotions, but personally, it, dance just feels good to me. I'm very protective of that for myself. So I, I need to make make sure that whatever I'm fusing is authentic to how I'm feeling at the time. That's so important. And I think especially as it becomes a profession or as it becomes a deeper part of your life, it's kind of hard to keep that for yourself and not give it away for other people quite as much. So well done. I'm always fine tuning that and working on it. And I let my students know that dance is about individual expression. When you're coming to my class, however you're feeling, there is room for you to express that in the dance. So if you're feeling tired or you're feeling excited or you're pissed off, you can express that through dance and you're not supposed to look like me. So I, even if I'm teaching you technique, I'm teaching you choreography, it would be best if you make it your own. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna help you with technique, I'm gonna teach you these steps, but then how are you feeling about it? Express yourself. I don't wanna create an atmosphere where people might be trying to look like somebody else, which is, I feel like what I was going through a lot in the very beginning of Billy Dance, and this was no fault of anyone. It's just like, there's a journey that you take to find out how you can best express yourself. Yeah. And then our bodies changed too. What felt good yesterday might not feel good today. And be open to that. You know, my knees might today be like, we're not doing level changes. And I'll be like, okay, we have mm -hmm. to be open to, to change. How do you create all of your choreographies for your classes and workshops? And is that different from creating a performance choreography for yourself or your troupe? My favorite thing is to make dances. It's my favorite. I always start with finding a song that I like. So I'm listening to Spotify a lot. Like everybody, you're listening into whatever whatever service you use or however you listen to music. And then I try to keep a playlist of songs that I'm interested in moving to. Because we've all been there, you're in the car and you hear this song, you're like, hmm, that could be good. I'll remember that later. No, you won't. I'll decide on a song and I create a new choreography every week. I create a one minute combo every week. But if you make yourself do that, you'll get better at creating. So it starts with a song. I'll be listening to the song in the shower, wherever, just so that I can like get used to how I feel about the song and start visualizing what kind of movement I might do. And then I allot myself an hour to choreograph one minute, no more. You just throw some paint on the canvas. I don't wanna be belaboring it. Oh, I don't know what to put next. We've all been there, I've been there. I don't like it. An hour. One minute, get it done. I tend to enjoy that. After an hour, I got some dancing done. It didn't break me. I'm not exhausted. I'm not stressed out about it. I feel good about it. And that is what I want for myself. So then I teach that that same day. I also make myself create it on the day that I'm gonna teach it so that I don't put it off. Because you'll be like, okay, I'll do it on Wednesday. Okay, no, I'll do it on Thursday. Okay, and then you stretch it out. I don't want that for myself anymore. There was the time when I was doing that kind of thing. It's easier for me to create something that I know I'm gonna teach to students than it is to create something that I know I'm gonna perform myself because in my head, I'm like, it has to be a masterpiece. It doesn't. For me, I want it to be something that like I'm expressing myself. Here's something that's fun. I would like to show it to you. One thing that I do try to do is like, I have to create a piece for a show that's coming up. I'm gonna create the first minute for my students. That's gonna be the first minute of it and the rest of it, I'll just improvise. I like choreography best and I have to make myself do improvisation. For a lot of people, it's the other way around. Some people are really great at improvising 
improvising and they don't like choreography. I'm a choreography person just because of my dance background. So my compromise is sometimes to choreograph the first minute or choreograph the beginning and the end and force myself to just feel it in the middle. With my students here in DC, my troupe Shimmy Pop, I do that with them all the time. But I have been nervous to do it in a workshop with people who don't know me. So with my students, it's easier because they've got the technique down and they can kind of read my mind just because they've been dancing with me for so long. But yeah, I can make up dances for them on the spot. It's good for them and it's good for me because it shows them that I am not working any magic. It shows them exactly what I'm doing and it encourages them to do it themselves. And I feel like it makes it more accessible. And then also it's good for me because it keeps me on my feet. Even with my students who I'm very comfortable with, sometimes that's scary for me because I'm like, what if I can't think of the next step? I don't know, it always works out. Like we made some really good stuff just like that. It's been fun. The Shimmy Pop is something like 17 to 18 students and they are so good. I couldn't have dreamt of a better group of people to dance with because not only are they talented and hardworking and creative, they're like funny and smart and like really sweet. It's just such a good group. I took them to Paris with me to perform, took them with me to Hawaii to perform. And it's just such a dream to find a group of people that, that you would travel with. Like you, you don't want to travel with everybody. So you said you had an online showcase coming up soon. Is that correct? Yes, I am so honored to have been invited by Keishi and Belly Queen to their annual winter showcase. It's called Festive Tales and it's on December 12th and it's all online. My online classes are ongoing. I welcome people into either the enrollment session. Those are a great deal because they're four week enrollment sessions. If you do that, it's a little bit cheaper and you also have the flexibility of taking class whenever you want to because you get all of the class videos. I have drop-in classes and something that's new is that I'm offering gift cards. You know, if you wanted to take my class, but you want somebody else to buy it for you, you can just send them the link to the gift cards. Yeah, so it's a great way to support an artist and a local business. And I think that that is something that's becoming very important right now is to support local and small businesses. Definitely. Well, shoot. Those are all my questions. All the questions. Thank you so much, Ebony, for visiting today and telling us about what you're up to and giving us a little background on how you became the fabulous fusion dance answer we get to learn from today. Thank you so much for inviting me. It was really great to chat with you. Bye. That's it guys. For more information on Ebony's current workshops, classes, and performances, check out the description box below. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel so that I can continue to make more videos like this for you. Thanks for joining me today, guys. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let me start. Mm. I'm gonna have this.